the first uh, exhibit sprint uh, for our 2021 work cycle. Uh, we're going to show a couple of bug fixes and some um, additional features uh, this, that we've been working on the past week or so. Um, so one of the first things that um, I would like to show, and I'm going to kind of show a couple things that um, I'll maybe just explain what the previous behavior was uh, and show what the new uh, behavior is. Um, so we had uh, an issue when creating uh, pages in our uh, in the site using our uh, search over widget framework, where um, if somebody was just entering normal text, and then uh, if you you I, uh, you'd have to use shift and enter in this, um, which puts you onto a new line, um, and then again, so that you know the the um, intention of the user here is clearly to um, add new lines. But what was ending up happening is all of this text was being um, put into a single line. So the, the line breaks were not being honored when the user was trying um, to create uh, those line breaks in the page. And now we are um, actually um, honoring those. So before they were having to do a double, basically a double line break every time they wanted to um, achieve uh, the, the line break that they were trying to. Um, so now um, that has been addressed and um, I, we believe working as intended. Um, Another uh, update that was made um, is in our search across feature, when you're searching across all exhibits, um, we were getting a kind of a, a, a standard uh, header up here that had some text that was about the software that the uh, application was running on and didn't have our Spotlight at Stanford branding. And so we fixed that bug. And so now uh, in the search across site, uh, side of our exhibits application, um, we are having our appropriate spotlight at Stanford uh, title and subtitle branding um, as we would expect. Um, another bug that was uh, fixed, um, I'm using the images of Rome exhibit here as a good example. Uh, if an exhibit had chosen a different per page than was the default, which was typically the uh, smallest number, uh, which is now 12, um, if they had set a different uh, default, uh, the ordering of the options in the per page drop down would put the one that they had set at the top. So in this case, this would have this was previously reading in order 48, 12, 24, 96, with 48 being uh, the first one in the list since it was um, now set as a default. And we've addressed that to make the uh, order kind of now what would be more expected. So they are remaining in the um, numeric order, even though the default for this particular exhibit happens to be set to um, not the first one. Um, and the last bug fix that I will show uh, here is also from the Images of Rome exhibit. Um, and uh, you know, previously, one of the things that folks had noticed um, is that in dependent from the search results, the titles that were being displayed on record views um, in some cases had some additional punctuation that was not in the metadata. So uh, frequently a, an additional period was a, a being applied uh, to the titles uh, when being displayed on this full record view. And we have now um, remedied that and are now making sure that we're using the same field in both cases and not applying uh, additional punctuation to this data that um, isn't present in the original records. Uh, I'm gonna now hand it off to uh, Gary to talk about some of the new feature work that we've done. Thanks, Jesse. I'm going to talk about another feature we've added uh, in this work cycle. Uh, called browse groups. So one of the um, powerful features of Spotlight um, is uh, called browse categories. Uh, and this lets uh, exhibit curators um, create saved searches um, that sort of represent different subsets of the exhibit items um, and give them a label and a background image and um, uh, they can present these on the browse landing page and this enables exhibit visitors to uh, really easily um, you know browse these these sort of subsets and you know click on uh, a particular subset of items that's in, of interest to the to the uh, exhibit visitor uh, so a lot of our uh, exhibits at Stanford ex exhibits at Stanford use uh, the browse categories feature uh, but some of the exhibits, especially exhibits that have many, many items in them, uh, they end up with uh, quite a 
number of browse categories. And this makes this browse uh, landing page uh, a little bit harder for the user to sort of parse out the things they might be interested in. So this new feature we added uh, called Browse Groups lets the exhibit curator um, group these browse categories. And so this is an optional feature. Uh, no existing you know, curator who doesn't want to use Browse Groups, you do not have to use this feature. Uh, but if you do have an exhibit uh, with a lot of browse categories, um, this is an option you can use to group your browse categories. And so I'm going to another exhibit here um, where you can see here in the, we're in the admin section here showing all the browse categories that this exhibit curator has set up. And you'll see there's quite a number here. I'm not really sure how many there are, but it looks like there might be uh, upwards of 50 different browse categories. Um, with this new feature, though, uh, the, the exhibit curator has been able to go to the Browse Groups tab, which is, which is we've added with this feature, uh, and um, added these five uh, Browse Groups. And they're easy to add. Um, you would just you know, add a, a label for the group here. Um, it will add a new card to this list of Browse Groups. And um, then you can uh, you know, change the order of these browse groups. I'll explain what that does in a second. Um, and uh, you can keep them unpublished until you've uh, assigned browse categories to this group and you're ready for the uh, exhibit visitors to see this group. And you can also delete the group if you don't need it. So in this case, we have, again, five browse categories, um, sorry, browse groups. And um, now we just need to assign browse categories to them. Uh, and so the way you uh, assign browse categories to a browse group is going to the browse categories tab and selecting uh, a given browse category to edit. And now there's this new uh, tab on the edit page for browse categories called group. And when you go to group, it will list every browse group that you've defined on that page I previously showed. So here are five browse groups in this exhibit. And you can uh, assign the browse category that you're editing to uh, zero or more groups. So a browse group doesn't have to, a browse category does not have to belong to a browse group, um, but it can uh, be assigned to as many of your existing browse groups as you want. And so in this case, we've signed this, this first browse category to one group called organizations. And so as the curator goes through and does that for all the browse categories they want to assign to a group, uh, and when they're finished, uh, then the browse, the, the browse landing page for exhibit visitors uh, now looks like this. And so for the, the, the only change for exhibit visitors is we now have this uh, set of uh, filter buttons at the top. Um, there's always a button called all and every browse category uh, in the exhibit that's been published uh, uh, shows up on the all page. Um, so whether or not it's been assigned to a browse category, I mean a browse group or not, it will show up in all. And then the other filter buttons uh, just limit the browse uh, categories that are displayed to um, ones that have been assigned to that browse group. So this is the people browse group. And when we clicked on that, we filtered down those 50 or so browse categories to a dozen or so. And we go to events. Now we have a different sort of set. Um, you can see this one you might have noticed was on the previous page. So this is an example of browse category that can be assigned to, that was assigned to multiple groups. And so as we go through and we look material types has just six uh, browse categories in it. So the overall goal here is just to let those curators with many browse categories, you know, put them into logical groupings and help exhibit visitors sort of uh, navigate browse categories by the, uh, the, the kind of group labels that they that attract their interest. And now I will turn it over to Jack. Thanks, Gary. So I'm going to talk about a new feature called bulk actions. Uh, so we've added an update here to add two types of bulk actions to uh, the user interface um, in a search result. 
Um, so here I'm in an exhibit called My Favorite Cat. Uh, it's a really nice exhibit. Um, and there's some a lot of different facets here um, already. And, and maybe I want to uh, make a change based off a search. So I'm in a facet on art and design. And so I have this search here. And I have uh, three different items that are here. And uh, maybe I want to change the vis visibility on these items. So I'm going to change the, I'm going to click bulk actions here. I'm going to click change item visibility. And um, I'm going to click private, make them all private. So it gives me a confirmation. I click OK. And uh, the visibility is being updated. And now sometimes I'll update, it'll show them immediately. But when I refresh the page, we can see that they've um, now all updated. So this is kind of a really nice feature um, to uh, update the visibility uh, based off a large selection of items um, can be done. Um, and then, you know, I can also change that back. So I wanna make these items back uh, public. So I'll do that. Um, and now they uh, refresh the page and they should be updated. Now this is only a small number of items, three objects. And so it's fairly quickly, but you know, if I was doing this on like say 10,000 items, you know, it'll take, um, it, it's kind of takes linear time here. So um, it would take a little bit longer. Uh, we've also added a feature um, called um, uh, adding tags, bulk actions using adding tags. So on a same search result, um, I can add a tag. And so, um, you know, for, for, for this example, um, I'm going to add a tag to these three items. They're already in a search result together, so I could link them in a search or anything like that. But I'm going to call it uh, <clears throat> good cats. So I add tag good cat and uh, click add here. It also asks me again, are you sure? I'm gonna say, yep, I'm sure. And it gives me the message tags are being added for these three items. So in the same way, this is gonna happen in the background um, after I do it. I'm gonna refresh the page here. And now I have this facet called exhibit tags. And I can see there's three items there that have now been tagged with good cats. Um, and so, yeah, that's the bulk uh, adding tags. Um, we're still kind of in process on uh, the bulk action features, but um, we're hoping to add new types of bulk actions uh, here shortly. All right, well, that's all we have. We'll see you next week.